There was an early and chilly start to race day proceedings with pre-race tensions starting to kick in. One person in a relaxed mood was former SA drivers and co-drivers champion Bucks Carolyn, who just cannot stay away from off-road racing. No, you can't. Uh, you know, um, I say to guys, if you're a drug addict, you can go to a home, they'll fix you up. But when you've got petrol in your blood, it's the end of you. And so um, this is my comeback, and I thought it would be a good year to do it. Me and Shumi phoned me last night, wished me good luck. So I think we, we were hoping for fourth place today. Carolyn, older brother Richard, and other veteran drivers and co-drivers are from the old school of off-road racing. After a two-year break from the sport, Carolyn has noticed major changes. Two and more professional. I mean, the last time I was in a car was in 2008, and uh, it's just become so professional. The marking is excellent. The route schedule is unbelievable. I mean, you really got to be dumb to miss the calls. I missed three yesterday, so <laughs> it's part of the thing, you know, using the GPS. It, makes it a lot safer, so uh, it's just it's unbelievably professional. One of the surprises of the Donaldson prologue was the performance of Ramon and Moret Beside Note in the Red Star Raceway Toyota. Yeah, well, it's for us a great surprise. I think it's going to be a good day. But the preparation of the car is, you can see, that the end of the race is going to be a lot of time to spend it. So it's going to be a lot of time. And your tactic for today? Ach, we're going to be basis net. The house is ons gister gehou het, ek meen ons het a, het ons het a passie gevat gister en ons het niks, het ons nie oor ons vermoe of oor my vermoe probeer rui of so iets en so, ons gaan my house is het, dit is ons gister ge, gegaan het. The Denko 400 was run over two loops of around 150 kilometers with the start finish and the designated service point all situated at the Darling Club. A big crowd was on hand on a chilly morning to watch the start with ABSA off-road championship races these day run on real time. This means the old method of cars leaving at two minute intervals has been scrapped and competitors now start according to their Donaldson prologue times. In some cases, only seconds separate cars after the Donaldson prologue, and this sets the scene for some early race action. There was only 10 seconds between the Atlas Copco bat of Nick and Ryan Harper and the Century Racing bat in the hands of Colin Matthews and Alan Smith. That was one early battle to keep an eye on, with Matthews one of the quickest drivers in the ABSA series. With only four seconds between Hannes Grobler and Henny Ter Stierke in the RFS Toyota Hilux and the Team Castrol Toyota Hilux of Anthony Taylor and Robin Houghton, that was another early battle to watch. Grobler is one of the most experienced campaigners around, and right behind the two Toyotas, reigning special vehicle champions Evan Hutchinson and Ahim Bergman would be looking to make early progress in the motor right -like bat. Out on the route, Shamir Varyawa and Siegfried Rousseau were making the most of being first on the road. Not having to contend with early morning dust was a major advantage, and the team total pair were intent on making the most of it. Charging along behind Varyawa and Rousseau were Herman and Wichard Silvat, who still had a few reliability worries with the new SVR was concerned. The dust was starting to build up in pockets along the route, but was not having too much of an effect on Chris Fisser and Jarpi Badenhorst, who were running strongly. They were third on the road and leading the production vehicle category with Nick and Ryan Harper in the Atlas Copco Bat, chasing after them, along with Colin Matthews and Alan Smith in the Century Racing Bat. The Century Racing car is an aging Spec Zero model. As such, it is one of the first bats to be built, but is still going strong and has an indecent turn of speed. Of much more recent vintage is the Team Castor Toyota Hilux of Anthony Taylor and Robin Houghton. Their immediate target was the RFS Hilux of Hannes Grobler and Hinnie Ter But in the dusty conditions, overtaking was not going to be easy and would need a measure of cooperation from the car ahead. Steaming along behind Taylor and Houghton were special vehicle champions Evan Hutchison and Ahim Bergman in the motor right bat. The dust was making for awkward conditions with the experienced Hutchison and Bergman prepared to play a waiting game and not take any early risks. Anthony 
Finally, Taylor and Robin Houghton finally picked up a place when Krobler and Testecher kindly moved over to allow the team Castor Toyota to go steaming past. Further back in the field, former quad racer Jimmy Zahos and Steven Kutsia were running strongly in the Cobalt Racing Porter and had picked up a couple of places. Among their victims were Ramon and Marek Besaidenhout in the Red Star Raceway Toyota Hilux, while Johan and Dion Besaidenhout had moved to the front of a Class P in the Adenko Bat. <laughs> Veteran Nardis Alberts and son Louis were looking strong in the Rapsa bat and were being chased by a trio of SP-class cars. At the front of that queue was Gary Bertold and Andre Vermeulen in the Atlas Copco Toyota Hilux. Right behind them were Mike Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson in the Regent Racing Nissan Navara and Christian Deploy and Henk Janser von Fieren in the RFS Toyota Hilux. The Regent Racing and RFS crews had moved ahead of Archie Rutherford and Craig Dartfire, who were running second in Class P in the Regent Racing Jimco. There were a couple of good midfield battles starting to develop. The ever-improving Bulla Boerters and Johan Pretorius were fending off Lode Brain and Rian Greilung, who were relishing their first SP class outing in the Rubicon Ford Ranger. The Bloemfontein-based pair spent last year in Class E and were holding off the vastly more experienced Terence Marsh and Bux Carolyn in the second Regent Racing Nissan Navara. An early puncture was a setback for Class P Prologue winners Johan van Staden and James Rousseau in the KEC bat. The flat cost them 11 places and they were having to play the catch-up game with Gorbis van Tonda and Freddy Krill in hot pursuit in the Unifreight Ford Ranger. Behind the Harry Smith team newcomers, Neil and Courtney Mayer were running strongly in a Zarco Magnum. Behind the Mayer's veterans, Richard Schilling and Chris Davies had taken the Ace Co ahead of Class B leaders Derek Dutoy and Andre Rieder in the Orange Tree Bat. Rieder, a Darling businessman, was having his first taste of off-road racing in an effort to promote the Darling wine experience. There wasn't much to choose between the two cars, with the pair being chased by Class D leaders Diervald van Breda and Johan de Toy in the Northern Toyota Hilux D4D. After an overnight clutch repair job, the Potrefstrom pair were looking comfortable. Keith and Andrew Mahanetti were also making good progress in their Zarco. They were lying second to De Toy and Rieder in Class B and had their sights set on a solid finish in the points. Closing in on the Mahanetti's were Class E leaders Bucky Lambaskachny and Rikus Erasmus in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. The Class E car was running ahead of Peter Ruthven and Rudy Britz in the Roacon Toyota Hilux. And behind them, SA champion Duncan Foss and Rob Howie were trying to make up ground after a disastrous prologue. Prop chaff problems and a 15-minute penalty for a faulty rear warning light left the Team Castor Toyota pair with a mountain to climb and further tribulations for them were not far off. Running at the back of the field were a string of teams who also had a tough time of it on the Donaldson Prologues. A burst radiator pipe cost Willem and Dana Force plenty of time in the Forces Toyota Hilux running in the SP class. Radiator problems also hit Nahim Mosaji and Rayan Bodhanya and the Maxis Jimco, which unfortunately lost all water, but luckily it was close to a small stream. Big crowds lined the route, and behind the Mosaji car, Brandon Harkis, a previous winner of the race, and Scott Watson were giving the new JMR fleet management that Spec 4 made an outing, with Marius Nicholson and Rod Jeffrey soldiering along in the aging Orange Tree Sandmaster. Newcomers Gerald LaRue and Willem Pretorius were feeling their way in the Roacon Ford Ranger running in Class E and they were just ahead of Roacon teammates David and Gary White who dropped out of the prologue with electrical problems. Also victims of a dodgy prologue were Nick Gosler and Richard Carolyn in the Men's Health International Zarco with Gosler making a welcome return to racing after a year's absence. 
Some intrepid men in their magnificent flying machines were following the action with Harry Steffen and Dwayne Furcht bringing up the rear of the field in the tiny Nanyi powered by a Kawasaki motorcycle engine.